Okay, so let's start. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining. My name is Santiago uh, and I will be presenting this upgrade training today. So let's cover some basics. Uh, let's have a quick look to this year's calendar. So, ARGA 22 International Version was released worldwide last June. In July, we released the New Zealand version along with the New Zealand template. After that, from August to October, we will be delivering the upgrade training for our select customers uh, later on from November and until February next year, we'll be having the user group and some new Graphisoft certified trainings. From March, the Gamish Tools uh, development for Agile 23 starts along with the improvement of the New Zealand template using all our customers' feedbacks. So make sure if you have any requests which or complain about the template, let us know uh, through a support ticket so we can improve this for the next release for Argyle 23. Great. Now, some uh, value propositions for our select customers. Um, basically, our, our select customers get uh, the Essentials library uh, with some new objects, the Arcade 22 template manual, uh, some extra surfaces, more objects, tips and tricks, uh, new on every first Monday of each month, uh, webinar recording, discounts on all products, training, access to the Arcade community, events, don't get insurance, Argat support and so on. Some of the pro offering certified short courses, open beam, parametric design with Rhino, scene render, custom object creation without GDL, uh, Argat Solibri workflows, and more. Um, some GDL and API programming by appointment and better recruitment. It's pretty cool. Now, let's cover why being uh, becoming a select customer. Well, uh, select membership offers many benefits. Um, annual free Argal upgrades, free uh, prior to response for technical support, access to upgrade trainings, uh, one booking per ArcGuard Select license, also uh, the option to purchase one 200 hours license per current year, uh, also discounts on the three day BIM intro training course, discounts for custom trainings and thousands of free Argat objects that can be downloaded from BIM components or mycalmish.com and many other things. Let's move on. Um, don't forget about mycalmish.com from where you can download the Calmish tools along with the CI Essential Library the template manual, recorded webinars, tips, services, objects, guides, etc. Now, let's start with the New Zealand template. So, um, Installing the New Zealand version of ArcGal will have the New Zealand template already included on it. To, to check that you are using the New Zealand version in your ArcGal, go to the top bar to help about 
And here, in this picture, you will uh, you have this uh, the number of the update and the Argal version that you're running. So to make sure you're running the New Zealand version, just make sure this uh, this is shown in this picture. Great. So um, now the in the New Zealand template we added and changed some some bits. Let's go one by one. So first the toolbar. We made some changes on the toolbar. Now we have an annotation drop down and a selections tool. Some changes on the view map. Uh, well, clone folders are back. Clone a folder means that you recreate a project map folder inside a view map. In that sense, for each new viewpoint you create in the project map, a matching view will be created in its clone folder in the view map. Pretty cool. So, for example, uh, if you clone the project maps into your elevations, then the clone folder in the view map will always show all interior elevations of the project, even new ones added after the creation of the clone folder. Well, that could be pretty handy. The next one is uh, Sun Study. So, um, we are aware that some councils are asking for Sun Studies for building consents. So, we have added some predefined views. With some studies for different dates and times, particularly winter and summer solstice. So this could be pretty handy. Uh, basically, you will just open one of these view, and you will have your um, your building um, and the shadow of the building being uh, displayed on different dates and times around the year. Um, yeah, I mean, you can still do a sun study through the uh, standard procedure, but yeah, that could be pretty handy. Now, let's go to, let's go to the, now, let's go to the layout book, some changes over here as well. So, a new subset folder called Working Drawings. All layouts now have an A prefix. For example, A101, 102, and 103. Also, we have added a new blank A1 master, which is great for cover sheets. In the publisher, some changes as well. Two new publishing sets. Um, the first one, um, all layouts to individual PDFs with revisions. So new publishing set, which now has a revision ID added to the PDF file's name. And also a consultant's pack PDF, DWG and IFC. New publishing set, which uh, will export all the layout sheets in the working drawing folder as a PDF and DWG. The 3D structural view would be exported as an IFC file. Also, we have added two schedules. The new, uh, one of the new schedule is the occupancy load. Now you can place a zone and then set the density. This will change the load using expressions one of the new features in Argat 22. The other schedule is the uh, IES BX default for BIMX. When exporting for BIMX, it uses uh, the data defined in an interactive element schedule of this name. We have added some extra layers as well. Um, some of the new layers are uh, hotlink structural, hotlink electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, and DOC dimension building extent. 
Also in finance select, we have added a new finance select criteria set for external walls. Now you can select any wall with the EXT extension in the composite name. That would be pretty handy. Also uh, in complex profiles, expressions and carding wall favorites. There have been some change in the New Zealand template to match these new features. And to finish this uh, folder, then there is a template guide for New Zealand select customers only. You can get it through the help menu here, help and go to New Zealand select template guide or you can also download it from your account in mykimage.com also remember to apply the kimage profile 22 and great now let's move on to migration so Let's cover some uh, of the recommended operating system. So basically, uh, for Agia 22, the recommended operating system is Windows 10 and Mac OS High Sierra and Sierra. Uh, here you have some compatible but not tested uh, systems like Windows 8.1, 8, 7 and Mac OS El Capitan. Uh, also, keep this in mind, it is not recommended to upgrade your Mac OS to Mojave yet. Graphisoft will keep us updated. So don't start um, Mojave in your Mac yet until further notice. Now, uh, some hardware requirement. Um, we have a 64-bit processor with four or more cores. A RAM of 16 gigs of more or more is recommended. And for more complex and detailed files, uh, 32 gigs or more is uh, highly recommended. Also, um, it will uh, boost uh, Agile's performance if the software uh, is installed in a solid drive, so SSD or Fusion drive. Also for the graphic card, a dedicated OpenGL 3.2 compatible graphics card with onboard memory of a gig or more and a display resolution of 1440 by 900 or higher is recommended. The minimal hardware to run uh, recommended to run uh, Argya 22, it's a uh, 64-bit processor with two cores, a RAM of 8 gigs, and a graphic card of all with OpenGL 3.2 and a display resolution of 1366 by uh, 768 or higher. Now, <clears throat> special tips for software key users. Uh, remember to upload your software key to the cloud when making any change to your hardware or operating system. That includes updates, upgrades, uh, restarting your system from a backup, changing your graphics, uh, your video card, your graphic card. So yeah, keep in mind, um, uh, update your software key every time you make any of these change, changes. Um, because if you uh, any of these uh, thing could could destroy your software key, and you will be forced to wait for a 24-hour key replacement procedure. So yeah, just save yourself some time and upload the key to the pool, to the cloud. Great. Now, um, migrating existing projects. So. When you see, if you have existing uh, projects, uh, migrating is pretty easy using the migrating, migrating dialog box when opening a file in a newer version. 
But one thing to remember is the cutting wall. If you are using the library parts for your cutting wall, you might find some unexpected behavior. This is because in ARCA 22, we are using objects with building materials rather than just plain surfaces. So let's go here. The first cutting wall from ARCA 21 is using built-in library parts, but the second one is just using library parts. This one right here. So that's why all these bits are missing. If we go to the floor plan, the building components have this nice blue hatch, while the one using library parts, this one right here, comes up with this brick hatch that we certainly don't want. So let's change that. To fix this, we have to add a migration library. So let's go to File, Library Manager. Now, in this dialog box, we will load in the migration library. Let's take a look. So, in this dialog box, we will click here, Migrate Libraries, Migrate. This is in case you haven't done it uh, when you first opened the file. If you skipped the migration process, you have to go through this step. Now, click OK, and our curtain wall is back. Let's give it a couple of seconds. There we go. I'm running a slightly old uh, Mac. So that's why it's taking um, some time to load the information. So now um, to adjust this, we need to um, update the frames and the panels to the ones that we are using here. So let's select. Uh, this curtain wall. Let's open its settings. And here, let's go to frame, the frame tab, and let, let's select all the frames, all this one right here. And let's click here in the black arrow pointing right. And let's select the frame 22, this one right here. Great. Now let's go to the panels tab. And let's select the main panel and change it to the built in CW panel, this one. And select the distinct panel. And let's assign the CW panel 22, this one right here. Right click. Perfect. Now click OK. That will update your model and everything is looking fine. Now, collaboration between projects. Um, if you're looking to collaborate this between different versions of article, remember that down saving is not a method for collaboration. Elements get missing when down saving versions of article. So just don't don't do it or if you're if you're forced to do it, try to not down save more than two uh, previous versions because uh, some elements might and will go missing. Now, uh, say goodbye to Beam Server. Well, not quite. Now, Beam Server is renamed to Beam Cloud Basic. It's part of the new platform called Beam Cloud that offers a free platform, uh, a free product uh, that is Beam Cloud Basic. 
and the pale one beam cloud great so let's cover some of these um, aspects so if you have uh, the first one multiple site optimization delta cache basically this is if you have multiple offices you might consider using delta cache this allows you to have an in-house storage of your files which improves the timing when sending big projects through the net especially useful when having offices in areas with broadband difficulties the next one you can add as many servers as you want also uh, with the BIMX Pro license if you have a project in BIM Cloud and publishing out a BIMX file everybody using that file will get the BIMX Pro features that is measures print and communication like take a screenshot of BIMX model draw on it and send it back to the team work person pretty cool the next one detail permission system you can um, manage this in a different way uh, high level of permission management you can allow people to join certain projects and not others and also have these people uh, being able to do some things and not other things within the same project uh, the next one uh, so that, that's pretty cool if you have an exchange server uh, with an LDAP you can incorporate that into your Beam Cloud and you won't have to create users basically this is just a cool way to uh, create users also you can have a detailed live load analysis you can analyze your server uh, and see how it's performing and you can move projects from server to server without asking people to leave that, can, that could be pretty handy and also you have an automated server backup which means that all the data of the Beam Cloud server gets backed up and you can restore your Beam Cloud from this and also a reservation system uh, that's pretty cool it's automatic you don't have to reserve every time uh, every element that uh, you want to um, to reserve to, to, to apply changes this will be automatic uh, so that could be pretty handy sometimes especially when you have many people uh, involved in the same project cool now let's take a look into uh, this scheme right here basically this is how this delta cache could work let's say you are in office number two you are computer number one this one right here and you want to uh, send this, uh, your file to your colleague you want to collaborate um, in the same project with your colleague right here he's also in office number two but the server of the company is in office one so typically you will have to upload your file to the Beam Cloud server and then download it again uh, to your colleague's computer but uh, uh, if Office 1 and Office 2 are in different locations having um, difficulties with broadband that could really um, boost down the uh, deficiency of your workflow so Delta Cache uh, tried to solve this so basically Delta Cache will be this little guy right here this little storage unit Will, which will have um, the, a mirror copy of the file from the Beam Cloud server. So this, uh, the Beam Cloud server and the Beam Cloud Delta Cache will be communicating in um, uh, live all the time. So uh, it's like it will be like uh, the whole workflow. It's saved in different devices. Um, uh, particularly in an in-house device so that uh, will boost your uh, your uh, operability time so computer one could uh, share uh, his file to his colleague using just the beam cloud delta cache now let's 
take a look. So reservation system uh, is pretty cool, as I said, uh, it's automatic. Um, if some element, it, so you can just click on it and it will be reserved. So, but if you click on an element that has already been reserved, you uh, can request it. So you have to right click on it and request it. Now, um, let's compare the free version to, with the paid version. So, the free version uh, comes included in uh, Arcal, uh, in Arcal, the paid version uh, is uh, based on the number of users. The cost uh, at this stage is um, $180, no, euros per user per year. So 180 euros per user per year. Several computers uh, being Cloud Basics is limited to one and the versions that support it's also one. The recommended users it's up to 20. Recommended active projects also up to 20. Premium support is optional and the packaging it's on the office's premises. Now, uh, the Bing Cloud, so the pay one, um, you can have multiple servers. It can support multiple versions of Archical, starting from version 19 onwards. The recommended user is unlimited, also an unlimited number of projects. Premium support is optional as well, and packaging could be on premises or using a graphics of cloud, which, which is coming soon. That would be pretty cool as well. Now you can change plan from Beam Cloud Basic, uh, sorry, Beam Server to Beam Cloud uh, Basic. Let's take a look how this works. So uh, basically, you can migrate uh, your version 19 Beam Server, version 20 Beam Server, and version 21 Beam Server into Beam Cloud 2018.2, having a Beam Cloud Basic for each Arcal version, all in the same computer. So, why migrating? Well, basically, all the updates and support from now on will be done for Beam Cloud. So, just keep that in mind. So, now um, the installation process. Uh, basically, the installation process uh, comes in two steps. First, um, you will install uh, the server component and then you will actually uh, move from Beam Server to Beam Cloud. So, first thing to do, download the latest Beam Cloud installer from the Beam Cloud download page. Then launch the installer, select the update existing component option, this one right here. Then select the Beam server version you want to update. This step will update the manager component of your previous Beam server. And now finish the update. At the end of the update process, a browser window appears with the your Beam Cloud has been updated to the latest version. Text, uh, note that at this point, only the manager part of the Beam server has been successfully updated to the latest version. A second installation has to be done. Let's launch the uh, installer again. Uh, select the update existing component option. And now, Select the Beam Cloud server as a component and update it. You will have to repeat the above uh, update steps with all installed Beam server versions to update them to Beam Cloud Basic. So if you have multiple Beam servers installed, you will need to repeat these steps for each one of them. A good thing is that you can't forget about installing a particular article version to a particular Beam server version. Now Beam Cloud Basic runs 
um, Archicad 19 onwards. So just run the installer for every Archicad version. Great. Now we can move into profiles. So uh, to start profiles, then first let's take a look to a call video. Let me just search for it. Um, this one, uh, 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 this one right here. Great. That was pretty cool. So let's go back to oh what happened here? Uh all right. Now uh profiles, parametric profiles are available for walls beams and columns um, the flexibility of this uh, parametric profile it's basically unlimited because you can uh, turn uh, some of the edges in your profile um, assign some modifiers we'll take a look how that works and using the same profile create many different configurations that could be pretty cool let's take a look how this could be applied in a practical exercise so if we go here let's say we have these three columns these three columns have been creating created using the same profile so i will just create a copy of this one right here and now take a look what I could do so first I could click on this parametric edge and move that here turn that 
bag now i could say oops uh, there you go uh, and now oh, it takes that bit And to finish, let's offset these ones as well. Um, pretty quickly, just by offsetting um, parametric edges, we got to change the same profile into many different configurations now before we will have to create in this case uh, three different profiles but now just using one profile with parametric edges we can uh, move some edges and have these different configurations so that could be very very handy Let's take a look um, how these edges can be linked. So an edge can be linked to a node, to a fixed location, and to another edge. Let's go to this exercise. So the first exercise that we'll do together is um, assign some modifiers to these beam edges so first uh, select the beam right click on it and go to edit selected composite profile here let's go to the modifiers tab and click in new modifier let's type the first modifier it will be called base depth we'll go ok and um, when you create a modifier the first thing you have to do is select the edge so I will select this edge and I will link it with this node right here, the bottom right node. When you click it, you will get this dimension. And let's just move it and place it here. Great. Now, this edge has a modifier assigned to it. And this arrow uh, pointing up will um will define something let's take a look so now if i click here in the plus and minus icon i can add another edge to this modifier so click here in add and now click on this edge right here the first the first click you define uh, the edge and the second click you define towards what direction the arrow is pointing now if these two arrows are pointing towards the same direction when I move one of the edges the other edge will move towards the same direction but if the arrows are pointing in opposite directions when I move one edge up for example this edge will be moved down so let's make sure we both our arrows are pointing toward the same direction so second click this way and that's done our first modifier has been created now let's create a second modifier so let's click in new modifier and now let's type web thickness yeah go ok and now let's select 
this edge right here and let's link it to this other edge right here we'll get this dimension and let's just place it here there we go those that modifier is done now let's click in add new modifier and let's add our third and final modifier that will be named girder thick click ok and now the first edge that we will select is this one right here and we will link it with this edge here on the top make sure the dimension line is vertical and when you got it vertical click and then place the dimension arrow here now we want to link this edge with this one right here so first let, let's click in in the plus and minus icon let's click on this edge first click to select it second click to place the arrow let's make sure they are both pointing towards the same direction and now we need to get rid of this edge so here select again the plus and minus icon and now click on the top edge it will turn to red click on it and you will take it out of the modifier great now that's down let's click apply and close the profile manager <clears throat> now in this 3d you can click on you will see that the edges that have parameters or modifiers assigned to them now they turn blue so if you click in one of them for example this one and in the pet palette select the option offset edge now you will see that you can modify it same with the web and pretty quickly we can have a very different profile so let's make a more realistic one something like this there we go pretty cool eh? now let's do this in a wall let's go to our wall right here in the 3d it has already been drawn so this right here is a wall that has been created using a profile so now if we click on the wall right click on it and go to edit selected composite profile now let's add some modifiers let's click in add a new modifier and the name of the first modifier will be top of wall <clears throat> go ok now the first um, the edge that we will select is this one right here the one on top so let's zoom in in this area click in this edge and let's let's link this edge with this node right here let's place the dimension here and now let's add uh, some edges to this modifier so we will click on the plus and minus icon click on this top edge make sure the arrow point is, is pointing towards the same direction and now let's add another one and let's add 
this edge right here, the top edge of our air cavity. Again, arrow pointing towards the same direction. There we go. Let's add a new one. So this modifier is done. Let's add a new one. This one will be named bottom of wall. Click OK. And now let's go to the bottom of our wall and let's select this edge right here. And let's link it to the same node that we selected for our first modifier. Now the dimension will be zero and let's place it right here to be aligned with the other dimension. Now let's add uh, some other edges. Let's add the bottom edge of the finish skin and the bottom edge of the air cavity. Again, take a look how the arrows are pointing towards the same direction and this modifier is done. Let's click uh, in new modifier right here to add our third and final modifier. This one will be named tile height. Go OK. And now let's go to the top here and let's select the top edge of our tile skin and let's link it with the same node that we have used for the previous modifier. Click here and place the dimension someplace here. Great. Now this one is done. So, oh, I made a mistake. I will do it again because I want, oh no, that's fine, that's fine, sorry. So, uh, perfect, that's done. So now let's click apply and close the profile manager. Great, now we can either select the profile and do the same that we did with the beam. So click here and change that in the 3D or we can do a cooler thing. If we go to the info box, if you scroll to the profile modifiers, here you have your three modifiers with the height. Um, so now you can change that here. So our top of the wall, let's make it 2500 and I will tile height, let's make it 300. So now we have this little tile skirting, pretty cool. And we can also change this skin right here. So if bottom of the wall, we type 300, now we have this new configuration, pretty cool. And let's move to the next one. So parametric profile information is also linked with labels. So if I was to modify this the web of this profile. If I change the size, the label will update. Pretty cool. Also, you can use the modifiers for uh, furniture creation. So if we take a look into this model, we use profiles to create these desks right here and use um, modifiers to change this furniture. So pretty quickly I could select this profile, click on the parametric edges
select offset um change the way it looks I can do the same here so if I select this profile and I click on this blue edge remember now the edges that are parametric are blue but now I can pretty quickly do something like this and also it applies to let's take a look how we could play with this profile right here we can take it down change the position of the cushion or again have something like this pretty cool all right so now let's take a look into expressions so expression expression is could be considered as just another property but the property that can include functions and do calculations expressions can be scheduled can be added to a zone stamp exported in an ifc file exported into graphic overrides or be added into label information Some of the cases where you could use expressions are documentation, quantities calculation, collision detection, graphic overrides, final select, grouping, rounding, call compliance, etc. Now, um, for those familiar with syntax, syntax is the language um, that Excel uses. So basically, this uh, this expression, this new feature, tries to include the power of syntax, um, um, the power of Excel, into Arctica and how this the use of, of parameters and calculations could uh, be very useful uh, for many many different cases scenarios, like for example, code estimates. Let's take a look how this could be applied. So if you go to this floor plan, I have all this area covered with tiles, and maybe I would like to know the number of tiles, um, depending the type of tile that I'm using, the, the size of the tile that I'm using. So if we go into my tiles schedule, I have my first tile here, SLA005. This tile dimension is 300 by 100 with a grounding width of 10 millimeters. Now, because I'm using expression, I, in these fields, now I know the number of tiles that I need and the tile area. So if I was to change this to maybe I'm using a different tile now. I found a tile that I like better and this tile will be 500 by 250 and uh, it needs 
uh, ground your width of five millimeters. So pretty quickly, this fields update and my tiled area remains 65 square meters, but the number of tile has changed. So pretty quickly I can calculate the number of tiles that I will be needing regardless of any change I could make or my customer could ask for or maybe the manufacturer. Let's take a look into other examples. So if I go to this beam right here, if I go to the beam schedule, um, I can use the expression to uh, define the, to round up the increments of the beam. So for example, typically, we uh, use beams rounded up to the nearest 500 millimeters plus an extra overhand of for a safe, a safe cut the overhand could be between 100 and 130 millimeters so let's take a look how this works so i have this beam right here the length is 3916 and the beam length to be purchased is rounding up to 4500. Now, if we go to Options, Property Manager, and now if we go to Prefab Beam Length Increment, this property. Uh, says that beams are available for purchase in this length increment. So instead of 500, let's assume a supplier is selling beams in 300 millimeters increments. So let's change this to 300. If we go, okay, let's take a look. Let's wait for the schedule to update. And now um, the beam length to be purchased has changed. Now it's 4200. Um, how is this rounding being done? By an expression. Here in the property manager, let's go to option. Property Manager, let's open it again, and let's go to Beam Length to be Purchased. Beam Length to be Purchased, and click on the expression. Sorry, this one right here, click in Beam Length to be Purchased, and click on the expression, open it, double click on it to open the expression dialog box, this one right here. Let's check this expression. How is this expression um, rounding up my beams? So basically this expression, what it's saying, it's a combination between parameters, functions, and units. Basically it says that the length of the beam plus two times the beam overhang value will define the beam length to be purchased. Now, the beam overhang value, it's also an expression. So if we click here in beam overhang, if you open the expression, we can see that the amount of extra beam length um, will define the overhang that if the beam length is less than 480 centimeters we will add a 10 centimeters overhang and if it's more than 480 centimeters we will add a 12 centimeters overhang 
Perfect. Okay. Pretty cool. So this uh, was uh, how this expression is working. But let's say we want to create a new uh, fill in the schedule using uh, other properties and other expressions. So let's take a look into that. Let's go to, uh, let's define the cost of our bins. So to do that, to define the cost of each one of these bins, we need to create two new properties. So let's go again to the property manager. So options, property manager. And in this dialog box, go to the BIM tab, this one right here, and click add property. Click in this little plus. And the new property name will be open brackets, UG in caps, close brackets, space, price per meter. Click OK. And now follow me on this. Let's change the data type to number. Let's change the value to 30. Sorry, value to 30. So the price per meter will be $30. And now let's display this tab right here. Click on this one, availability for classifications and click on custom. Click on edit and here type beam. Now, we want all these properties to be affected, so check all these boxes. Click OK. And now let's add a second property. So click the plus. And the second property will be open brackets, UG, close brackets, price of beam click ok now data type will be a number let's change the ability for classifications first let's click in custom edit and type beam and again Let's check all these boxes and to finish this, let's add an expression. So click here in expression and type. So let's try to make this as clear as possible. So we will create add a function, we'll add a function that will start by an open bracket, display this list, and let's select the parameter beam length to be purchased. So to help us in our search, let's type beam length. Let's, we have it here, beam length to be purchased, double click to add it, and now we have to divide it, so click here in operators and functions and display operators and select divide. Now type a thousand and select the unit length millimeter. Great. And now close brackets. Now let's click again in operators and functions and select multiply right here. And now let's display 
the parameters and properties list and let's search for price per meter this one right here double click so now we have the beam length to be purchased divided in a thousand millimeters by the price per meter we'll define this expression so click ok and now let's click ok great so we have just created two new properties and now we have to add them as a field into our schedule so in this schedule let's go to scheme settings here let's go to add fields here and let's type just ug to quickly find the two properties that we created select both of them and click add and now click ok let's wait for it and now we should be seeing uh, the price per meter and the price of our beams and here we have it this beam costs this price and if we change the length this will be updated so if I was to change the length of any of this in my 3D let's change this one right here now my schedule will be updated and not just the beam length to be purchased but also the price per beam because all these properties are linked and um, this makes the workflow way more efficient there you go I changed the length of this beam right here now the beam length to be purchased is 2700 the price of the beam will be just $81 pretty cool now let's move to the next one we can also uh, use expressions to create surface codes so before this training started we created uh, actually we changed to surfaces names in the surface library by adding a particular code at the beginning followed by an underscore for example for this one po1 underscore so um, this is the expression now we will create a expression called splitting rule let's take a look how this works so first it says split uh, brackets the outside face surface using a separator this underscore and keep the first part now if we go here first let's copy this whole um, expression so select the whole text and go copy and now let's go to the next view where we have the two surfaces with the full name so now let's go to the property manager and let's go to outside wall surface code this one right here let's click in expression here and let's paste the expression that we copied so now this is the expression we want to use that is correct the function the unit the symbology everything is right but here where it says the outside face surface 
that's not a parameter that that's just the name of the parameter so we need to change this name with the actual parameter so i will delete this and in the same spot i will open my parameters and properties and now let's type here outside face surface this one right here select that one and do you see how a parameter is highlighted by a color on its back that's the way to make sure you're using a parameter now click ok click ok and there we go it's done now let's move to the next example um we can use expressions to determine a windows code based on the windows width that could be uh, pretty handy when we need some pretty quick information about uh, our windows width so we'll use this very complex expression so let's just copy it basically what this expression says is that if the width of the window is between 500 and 1000 the code will be type 1 if it's between 1000 and 1500 millimeters the code will be type 2 and if it's between 1500 to 2000 millimeters the code is type 3 and any other than that will be custom so let's open the text box let's copy the whole expression right click copy and now let's go to options property manager and in the windows type windows type click expression and here let's let's make this bigger and now let's paste the expression control v or command v for mac so now uh, this is the expression but again we need to change the parameters name with the actual parameter so nominal windows under opening width on the reverse side let's delete that one um let's search for it here so let's type nominal or let's just type opening opening width on the reveal side there you go found it double click to select it and click on the box again so now we need to select this wording which now it's a parameter and paste it to replace each one of the other typed parameters so let's copy this so select it and go Control c or command c and now paste it in every parameter here 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 oh uh, here I left the space so it seems about right uh yeah let's oh something i uh, if i don't get to click okay it means that something is wrong let's take a look oh here i have this nominal i didn't there we go so now everything looks fine now let's click okay and click okay great 
So now let's go to the next view. And now let's select this window right here. And let's change its width. And now pretty quickly, or let's just change it here in the info box. So here in size, let's type 1200. Now it's type two. Let's type 1600. Now it's type three. And as we said, now let's type 2100. So we said any uh, measure um, after 20, uh, 2000 will be custom. So there we go. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, expression could be pretty handy. Um, and all these expressions that we... Oh, no, I'm almost forgetting about this one right here. Oh, this this could be very, very handy for ghost estimates. Uh, you can define, by using expression, the number of bricks to order and the number of pallets. So, if I select this wall plan and I change it, these numbers update as well. That's pretty handy as well and this one right here 41c is the uh, height in brick courses so let's take a look of this uh let's check this expression this is the expression is very cool so if we go to options property manager and now let's go to bricks number or number of bricks uh let's see it should be number of bricks here and if you select brick type and measures here we have a value assigned to it and we can change it to match the size of our brick so we can change all these different type of bricks and use that as the merger. Also, if you go again to miscellaneous exercises, if you go to the expression used in height in uh, uh, courses, we can check that we are using expression, which basically it's the height of the wall divided in the height of the brick. So, uh, as I was saying, all these expressions. Um, are already included in the New Zealand template. So feel free to use them and uh, also keep uh, checking our Kademich website um, for tricks, uh, tips, or maybe even other functions uh, to be used uh, for expressions. Great, so now let's check uh, some other features so if we go to the first one headroom headroom great now we can uh, see the clear head space for our stairs so uh, let's take a look at this example we uh, have these two tubes coming out for MEP and now we can activate the uh, headroom box in our model view options let's take a look how that works so if we go to model view options if we click here in the little square to open it to open its settings if you go down to stair detail uh, uh, uh. Oh, oh it was already here stair option you have this head room box that now you can check so if you check it and you go okay now we will get to see 
um, our headroom. And now we could uh, run a collision detection. Let's go to design, collision detection. And now let's uh, try to detect a collision between uh, these two groups. For the first group, let's select element type is 3D types and in Argal classification it's in branch of and let's select here instead of MEP element let's change it to stair so let's type stair go select it and in group 2 element type is 3D types and Argal classification is MEP element so let's just remove this one the one in the middle we don't need it so element type is 3D types array classification is MEP element great so now let's click check and collisions found are two so let's close this let's click continue and now we can show the collisions between our cubes. Pretty cool. Another tool is the drainage. So, drainage. Now you come, let's change the mode of the options. Now, I changed model B options to all four to turn off this headroom or I could just select it back, go to the settings and just turn that off. Great. So uh, now we have other options. We can um, place drainage in both sides. So let's select the stair. And let's open its settings. I mean the structure tab in flight. Go to the draining tab right here. Tick the draining box. And now you can choose on both sides. Click OK. And there you go. Now we have drainage in both sides. Pretty cool. Now, walking line. There has been a change in a walking line. Now, well, not actually a change, more than more of a new option. Now you can reverse the walking line based on the floor plan where you are viewing it from. So let's go here to our top floor so you will see here that in the floor plan display tab under walking line you can select look from a level up and reverse the walking line it's pretty awesome let's go to railing now we have some other options we can now stretch the length of our handrail basically this allows us to do some creative uh, editing in our railings so let's select this one let's go to edit mode select this handrail and if you click on the note we can stretch it Also, we can change the uh, finish, the end of this handrail. We can select curve for return. So take a look. If I choose curve, I can change the angle, the length, so on. I can choose full return 
And a pretty cool thing is that if I choose a curve and now I select this node, I can stretch it to our ball. And now I can have something like this. Let's do it here as well. Let's change, let's select this rail in geometry method let's change it to curve and now let's stretch that to our wall awesome now let's click escape and now let's take a look into this one right here select uh, the rail and go to edit mode now do you see how these internal posts go through this rail doesn't look so nice so let's clean up this so first we so basically we will need to do some solid elements operations so first let's select the internal posts let's right click on the side and go to connect solid elements operation so the target elements are already selected so now let's select the rail click in get operator element yeah and now the operation will be subtraction with downward extrusion click execute and there you go now we can fix this bit here let's just move it down there you go move it back great now we also uh now can change the uh we have some other options for automatic fitting in our schedule Oh, that that is very very handy. Let me let me show you. So uh, before many times we'll have content overlapping. Some content will be too big. Uh, it could be a whole mess, and we'll have to sometimes do some manual adjustment. But now let's wait for it to load. Now we can be in for example this is a typical example and now we have to just go here to the top left corner in these three dots click here now in schedule cell size we can click in resize columns to fit content and resize rows to fit content click ok and pretty quickly we have cleaned up our schedule great now magic mouse now multi-touch gestures are supported you can swipe to pan pitch to zoom and with the magic mouse you can just pan using your fingers and hit all to zoom in and zoom out in a, a level of detail uh, now we can change the level of detail of the 3d from the model view options let's take a look i'll close this so now if you go to model view options you can select these three different level of detail 100 200 and 300 100 is this blocky look all the elements are very simplified if we go to LOD 200 a bit, a bit more detail and if we go to 300 much more detail that could be very handy for when you are uh, working in a very uh, complex project and very detailed obviously a lower level of detail depending the hardware that you are uh, using uh, it could boost the performance of your um, workflow and I got a stance. So now let's take a look into 
some other things like uh, attribute manager. Now the attribute manager is built in Archicad. Let me show you how this works. You can do a bunch of uh, things. Let's go to options, attribute manager, elements attributes, attribute manager. Great. Now, go to the pens tab. Let's select architecture, for example. Let's click here in the units to order it in ascendant. And now let's select all the pens that are using third, oh, uh, 0 0.13. So select this one, hold down shift and select the last one right here. Now, if we scroll up, if we change this one to 0 0.09, all the others will change. Another example is in composites. If we go to our composite tab, I can select all this one right here and activate slab, activate roof option, and I can check all that in the changes tab and I can take a look of what I've changed. That's pretty handy. Go cancel. Now let's go to door materials. Now we can uh, change the inserted panel in the side lights material. So basically now we can use different materials in our in the inserted panel of our main leaf and in the inserted panel in our side light. So let's take a look how this works. Let's use this 3D model as an example. So if you click on this joinery and open the settings, so go control T. Here we have leaf glass and sash glass. So leaf glass will be the inserted panel or the glass panel of our leaf. Let's change it to red, for example. And the sash glass, let's change it to blue. Go OK. Now you see that you can have different materials assigned to Highlight and leaf. That's pretty cool. We couldn't do that before. Now, if we go to our CI Essential Library, we will find some new objects. Let's take a look into those objects. You can go here to this view. These are some of the new objects. Uh, the first one, we have a new table that we can uh, use to import CVS data. If we go to the settings, we can change some bits, change the format text, edit text, change the table uh, settings, height, column, routes. So um, also the format cells, we can make some Cells bold, highlight some, merge, borders. It's like a mix with uh, Excel layout. Great. The next one, it's a pretty cool one. It's the paver tool. So if you click here in this paver, now uh, let's go to the settings. So right click, open the settings and under paving in graphic editing, select shape, go OK. That will show up the editor palette and here <clears throat> we can select these different editing options where we can move and add some notes. We can also, if we select 
here I move to curve edge we can carve some edges something like that now we can also offset edges cool now let's go back here i want to let's just play around i want to delete some of them don't really like this carve edge i will change it back maybe i will carve this one right here yeah something like that let's clean up these edges right here mm -hmm. yeah yeah let's use that now the next one is to create a hole in our pave and now if we move to the next editing option we can create a if you click here on the uh, pink spot we can add some edges to our Pave. Pretty cool. Now we can hide this editor palette. If I right click here and go to the settings, I can hide the palette and change the pavers pattern from basket wave. I have all these ones. Let's use circular. Circular is pretty cool and also we can change the materials so for paver surface we can use uh maybe this white rough as well so let's go to this two color white rough there you go and for the edge pavers let's just use some color so i will use maybe this paint forest green see if i go okay now i can go to the 3d pretty cool you can go and be very creative with this little tool this is very handy many times you want to create a uh, paper especially in for urban and exterior design so now you can do so and um, it's pretty easy and interactive to do this is a pretty cool tool with um, built-in editing options so that's pretty impressive now let's go to uh let's go back to the tools uh sorry the new uh ci essential library new objects here we also have a tap and a meter box many customers requested for a tap so now if i show this in a 3d now we have a tap we can move it and we have a meter box we can change as well there you go now let's go back to here we have also this new portal frame let's take a look 
So this new portal frame could be very handy for uh, warehouse and garage. We can change the rafter pitch. We can, if you go to the settings, we can change symmetric to mono pitch. Um, there we go. Great. Now let's go to the next one. So BMX, some new features for BMX. So let's take a look uh, to a, a presentation on video for this BMX tool. Uh, most of you will already be um, familiar with this um, with this tool, with this uh, software, with this add-on of Graphisoft. Let's take a look. Let's open this video right here. BIMX helps you deliver engaging, interactive design presentations on the fly. Thanks to the new presenter feature of BIMX Pro, architects and clients can all enjoy a super easy to use design pitch experience on iOS and Android devices. BIMX Hypermodels incorporate 3D building views and 2D documentation sets while also providing an intuitive, game-like viewing experience on tablets and smartphones. Using the presenter feature in BIMX Pro, handpick the most expressive 3D views and walkthroughs and organize these into a presentation set that makes it super easy to deliver design ideas to anyone. A BIMX presentation set may contain any model view in the gallery, created previously in the ARCHICAD project, or it can be defined directly on the mobile device on the Favorites tab. This includes not only plans and sections, but also detailed drawings, interior elevations, or even construction details on layouts. You can easily tailor these views according to any audience by reordering or hiding certain elements. Take BIMX with you to your next project management or client meeting. Make an instant impression anywhere you go. Just use the arrow buttons to hover between the predefined views in an exciting animated style. Need to zoom in or out on important detail? Step in and out of the presentation views? BIMX will find the way back to the next view. Besides one-on-one -on -one project discussions, the BIMX presenter is also an excellent choice for pitching design ideas to a bigger audience. When wirelessly connected to a TV screen or projector at an event or meeting, BIMX presenter's animated project views run in slideshow mode, giving you the opportunity to walk around, engage with the audience, and further articulate the ideas behind the work. BIMX makes architectural design presentations a walk in the park. Bring an engaging experience to the table with the help of BIMX today. Great. Awesome. Pretty cool, eh? So now, um, if I go back to um, Arika, Another option we have now for BIMX is that we can embed our BIMX file into websites. So we can have our company website showing um, some of our models in, um, in the, using the BIMX platform. That's pretty cool. We can also, let's say we are, we could show that in our portfolio or send, um, or send uh, our uh, website portfolio to uh, possible recruiters showing some um, BIMX files. So let's take a look uh, how uh, that will work. Let's take a look to the video. Uh, let's open again here. Um, this one right here, BIMX web viewer.
Great, awesome. That's pretty impressive. Great, so now we are uh, done with the other features. Um, let's take a short break. Uh, so now let's continue with our curtain wall. So let's open the curtain wall folder. Curtain wall came with some changes in Arca 22, but what version of Arca? Uh, when was the first release of the uh, curtain wall? In which version of Arca? It was Arca 12 in 2008. This was the picture of the cover. And yeah, so it has been um, uh, out for a while. So along the years, it had uh, many improvements. There you go, Arca 12. Now, let's take a look how these uh, improvements uh, can be applied. So, uh, where we left off. So in uh, Arca 21, uh, even though it had many improvements already, we have some limitations, like if we will have some panel height uh, applied to uh, different planes or planes uh, being in angles which will define planes in different sizes that will uh, create some discrepancies so some lines to not be aligned now with our new curtain wall tool we can do some new things so let's take a look let's grab our curtain wall and open its settings Go to Parting Wall Selection Settings and now here let's set our column sizes as fix. Let's go to Scheme, Column, Fix Sizes and now let's add three columns. So the first column A width will be 500 B will be 500 then C will be 2200 D 500 and E 500 there you go it should look something like this and now for our rows, let's change this to number of division and here let's type 5. Great, the first row will be 500, the second one will be 3000, the third one will be 3000 as well. And now we want our rows to be divided in the in a number of division, which will be five. So basically, what uh, Iga will do, we are sure that in each one of these planes, we want five um, times this pattern right here. So we will unlock all these locks. We will unlock all these measures. So for every plane, the row's height will be adjusted to match the plane size. So now if we click OK, let's give it a couple of minutes or well, seconds. Great, now we can see how our lines are aligned. Now let's do some more editing. Let's select all our curtain walls, go to 
the cartoon wall. Now let's change some frames and some panels so we can reproduce the um, signature building of the Arcad version 22. So first, let's select these frames right here. Check this one, this one, this one, and this one right here. Now select this one, this one, and this one right here, and this one as well. So select all the ones that are highlighted in green. And in frame type, let's change it to none. Merge panels. Now let's select the one on top. If we click here, select all horizontal, that will help us in the selection. Same with the one here, that will help us. So now let's select this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one right here. Again, let's help us with that. And to finish, let's select this one, click again to select the whole horizontal line. So with that, now let's change that to divisions. So pretty quickly, now let's change to the panels tab. And we will, oh no, let's go back to the scheme. And now let's select this panel right here and this panel right here. And let's make these two panels to be main panel. And this panel right here and this panel right here. Oh, this panel right here to be the distinct panel. Great. Now with those changes, let's click OK and let's see the result. Great. Pretty cool. These lines matching. And yeah, so uh, this tool is uh, pretty handy. Could, uh, you could have very, very creative results. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look. We have a bunch of examples for this curtain wall, so we can do some more practicing. Let's take a look uh, here to our basic uh, word for for pattern scheme. So let's take a look how we can apply this. Um, different pattern, uh, sorry, curtain wall settings in these three curtain walls. So let's select the curtain wall in building A, this one right here, and let's open the settings. Do you see that the curtain wall, the last and the first columns don't match, this one right here and this one right here? So Basically, when we have a fixed number of columns, sometimes the facade size won't match the exact division of the pattern, having some leftover space on the side. This leftover space, we call it infill. So now let's take a look into the settings. Let's go to the panel. And in panel, let's create a new one. Let's create a new panel that we will use to fill this infill. So let's go to panel, go to add, type gold panel. Go OK. Now go to Carting wall panel settings 
and override all the three surfaces, link them, and change this to some goldy color. Well, let's use yellow. Great. So now let's go back to the scheme. And here, in part of pattern, let's change it to gold panel. Go OK. And there you go. There we have the result. Now let's select the carting wall of building B. Let's open the settings. And now let's change the columns to best division that's already assigned here. So this changes the size of the columns and avoids having leftover space. So let's have column A unlocked. So column A will adjust to match the facade's size. And we can now make sure that the last column will be A. So we can start with A and finish with A. So column A will adjust and column B will always be 750 millimeters. So if we go OK, that's the result. First and last column are the same. So this is a symmetrical facade. And now let's take a look into another example. Let's click this carting wall. Right click on it, go to carting wall selection settings. And here, let's change it to number of divisions. Number of divisions. And let's type three. Finishing with B. Now, let's make sure A is 1450 unlock and B 750 lock. Perfect. Now, let's take a look. Now, we can have this. So, column A adjusting and column B having the locked measure. But now, if we go again to the settings and we select finish with column A and we go OK, we will have a symmetrical facade, symmetrical curtain wall. Pretty cool. So now let's go to some other example. So basically the default uh, components in our curtain walls are so a vertical and a horizontal grid. Um, the, the panel, of course, uh, our um, our frames, which could be boundary frame, transom frame, and million frame. Now, if we go to this example right here, let's try to reproduce or recreate this facade. So, to do that, let's here in this building we have two curtain walls overlapping. So let's select this one right here and delete it. Hit delete. And now select the one on the back, open the settings. And now what we will do is we will try to recreate this pattern, this configuration right here into our pattern. So uh, obviously we could Save this as favorite and apply this to here, but as an exercise, let's try to reproduce it manually. So, um, let's do a first change. Let's select all these, the following lines. So let's select one here. And if you click select all vertically and select all horizontally, you will be selecting all the horizontal lines. Now, Let's assign the transom frame 
So transom frame for all the horizontal lines. Great. Now let's select the following ones. Try to follow me because this could be a bit confusing. So select this one right here. Move it. Select this one right here. This one right here. This one right here. This one right here. This one and this one. Great. Now this one, this vertical line in the middle, select this one. Now this one and this one. And this one right here. Great. So now let's select this three. So this three. This one right here. This one. Basically we're trying to reproduce the frames configuration of our facade so we can just uh, look at the uh, this curtain wall and try to copy it so this one and this one so let's make sure all these vertical lines are selected and now let's change it to million frame there we go. And now let's select all the remaining lines and set it to non merge panels. So click, click, click. So just select the lines, select all the lines. There we go. Yeah. None merge panels. Oh, didn't have to do that. Didn't have to press OK yet. Now let's open the settings again. And um, now let's do some changes in the frame style. So click in frames. And let's select our medium and transom frame. Let's go to Carting Wall Frame Settings and let's override the surface and select Paint Ivory Black. Great. Now let's go to Panels, to the Panels tab, go to the Panels tab and let's add four panels. Click here, Add. The first panel will be named dark green go ok another one light green another one called glass another one called window great now select the window panel and change the panel type to CW window 22, CW window 22, this one right here, select it. And now let's go to cartoon wall panel settings, go to representation and surfaces. And here in materials and surfaces, let's click here, override surfaces, tick that box and select these two materials. And change them to paint ivory black, paint ivory back great now uh, let's go to our light green panel and let's override its surfaces let's link them and select paint pale 
jade, paint, pale, jade. Great. Now go to uh, dark green panel. And again, in cartoon wall panel settings, override the surface, the three surfaces, link them, and change it to paint forest green. Paint forest green. Awesome. And now to finish, let's select glass, override the surface, and select glass clear fast. Glass clear fast. Think them. So all of them are the same. And now let's go back to the scheme. And the first row and the row right here, select all these panels and uh, change them to dark green now select the ones right here the ones right here and the bottom row and change it to light green now all the others select them um, change it to glass and now this one right here change it to window great to finish up let's click in this right edge select the whole edge click here select all vertical just that one and change it to mullion frame great now click ok and that would be done. There you go. For some reason, our window didn't uh, change correctly. Let's check the settings. So if I go back to my panel, let's go back to window. I selected the CW22 panel and in cartoon wall oh i overwrite the wrong ones let's make sure here we are in model attributes general settings mm -mm -mm. Mm, for some reason this is not changing let's take a look what could be wrong uh, materials and surfaces uh, uh, uh. oh my bad we need to no yeah we're right CLU panel 22 No, so you have the window 22 dots that stage. All right, sorry guys. So for window, select CW window 22 and change it. Go to model attributes, override services, and for frame and sash. Now let's change to ivory black, ivory black. And now, so again, let's double check for our window panel, we are using the panel type CW window 22 and in model attributes we are overriding the frame and the sash surface to ivory black. So check this box and change these two surfaces to ivory black. Go OK and now that will update and there we go. Great. Now let's take a look into Honeycomb. We can also have a curtain wall creating a honey using a honeycomb. 
let's wait a little bit great so um, we want to reproduce this uh, carting wall so we will do it in an exercise let's go to the next view right here double click and now let's select this carting wall open the settings and here let's go to the scheme and let's select the following lines so this one right here this one right here this one right here and this one right here and let's change it to transom frame so let's go to transom frame there we go and now select these two panels add a crossing frame and select these two others and add crossing frame great now let's go to frames and select the train some frame and change it to built in bad glazed frame so let's search for the bad glazed frame this one right here now built in bad glazed frame this one built in bad glazed frame right and now let's go back to the scheme and select all the remaining uh, vertical lines so let's just select one click in select all or uh, vertical select all vertical and select all vertical and now let's change that to none merge division great now click OK and let's take a look to the result. There we go. Pretty cool. We can do things like this right here and get very, very creative. Awesome. Now let's take a look to the Cartoon Wall Boundary Editor. Now it's easier to edit our boundaries. So now uh, we see that we have this uh, facade, this building, and our uh, curtain wall is, is not matching our building facade. So let's select the curtain wall, go to edit mode, let's click here, and now turn off everything except the skin grid. So turn off all these layers except skin grid now if you click here on the top edge in the pet palette we get the option insert new node let's insert new node here where our other building starts so now I have this node right here I have this node right here so I can just offset this edge select the edge offset and offset the edge down to here right now let's turn on all the other elements let's go escape to leave the editor mode and um, now our carding wall is matching our facade shape pretty, pretty cool now um, we have some pretty interesting new uh, features uh, first you can now do Carting walls in a horizontal plane. So uh, you can use the carting wall tool not just for carting wall but also for um, ceiling. Maybe you can create a cool ceiling. You can even use it for tiles. 
you can use it for a bunch of different options because basically you can just draw a pattern that pattern turn it into elements and that, then use the pattern to create a curtain wall in a horizontal plane or a vertical plane so for instance let's say we have this pattern that matches the uh, water cube um, pavilion in uh, Beijing the one used for the uh, Olympic Gates in uh, 2008 and we draw all the frames on top of our lines on top of our drawing so now we can do some pretty cool things let's use this pattern editor to create the whole um, water cube uh, curtain wall so select this curtain wall go to edit mode and turn off Turn on the pattern I here, turn on pattern. And now let's select the edges of the curtain wall. So select the edge and offset the edge until it's aligned with the pattern shape. Same here, same here. And last one. Select the edge and align it to the pattern. Click apply. And now we will see the result. There you go. Let's hit escape to leave exit mode. Now we can just save this curtain wall scheme as a favorite and apply it into our vertical walls pretty cool under the same concept we can quickly draw an interesting and creative pattern so for example something like this then uh, trace this and draw the pattern using frames as we did with the water cube and um, pretty quickly and can create a curtain wall with a pattern like this so the possibilities now with this pattern option are unlimited you can go very creative I think this is an amazing improvement it's pretty cool uh, so yeah now let's play around and get creative now let's take a look into some carting wall tips first avoid having unnecessary grid this will create too many polygons too many lines that will mess up um, your carting wall performance and uh, the sharpness of the elements and also uh, uh, argal performance at the end so avoid having unnecessary grids and another thing is to use model B options to simplify the level of detail uh, in your curtain wall so uh, you can have a curtain wall full a simplified with frames only and a curtain wall schematic that could be very handy when you are uh, drawing a very complex um, curtain wall and obviously as more detail uh, more information uh, is there to be processed by the hardware so if you are using a curtain wall schematic that will be uh, very little information so the, the software will run smoother some examples of things that you can do with your curtain wall So, get creative, play around. So, that would be um, all for this upgrade training. Um, I want to say thank everybody for watching and I hope you all enjoyed it. 
So again, uh, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. And if you have any other question, uh, just type all your questions in the chat and we will uh, list all your questions and uh, reply to them through our support email. So again, I hope you all enjoy this upgrade training for Argo 22. Um, hope to see you in other webinar or training. So bye everybody and have a good day.